Let's take a look at uh, H. Simus habitat, southern hognose snake. Simus habitat is sand hills. Sand hill habitat is well drained soils that are easily burrowed into. Wire grass, pine trees, but the most important feature that you know that you're in sand hills is a turkey oak tree. There's some oaks that are similar, but turkey oak tree has these type leaves, very distinguished from the others. And that's how you know you're in an area that you could find southern hognose snakes or heterodon cymus. You might see pocket gopher mounds, geomies, wire grass, and you'll notice slopes in the sand hills, and you know you're on the ridge. This habitat is so interesting. At one time, Florida was mostly underwater. But these areas where the sand hills are now were islands. So a lot of really cool animals pick this area as their home for many, 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 many centuries. It's one of my favorite, or it is my favorite habitat. It's not easy to find stuff here, but when you do, it's usually really cool. Pine snakes, short-tailed snakes, indigo, diamondback rattlesnakes, all like this type of habitat. Crown snakes. The coloration of H. Simus is a sandy to light grayish background with darker blotches. Some individuals in North Florida, maybe one out of 10 found, will be a red coloration. Everybody calls them red simus. Not really known why some of them are red, it's just a morph. Typical behavior of a southern hognose snake, hit her down simus hissing, puffing up, and the triangular shape of the head. This is uh, a lot different than the eastern hognose snake, which actually hoods, spreads its neck, looks more like a cobra. The, the simus just puffs up and gets its head in a triangular shape with the hissing, breathing in, and then hissing out. This behavior goes on until it finally will play dead. Roll over, which has been documented on so many videos. Simus a lot of times get mistaken for pygmy rattlesnakes. And a lot of the locals in North Florida call them hognose rattlers. Other names are spreading adder, puff adder, but these snakes are obviously very harmless. H. Simus eating habits. Southern hognose snakes prefer amphibians, that being mostly toads, spadefoot toads, southern toads, oak toads are the preferred food for southern hognose snake. Now these toads are active at night. 
while they're active, southern hognose snakes are inactive, usually going underground or someplace hidden at night. As these toads move around at night, in the morning, Simus, southern hognose snakes, start moving around, following the trails of the toads. The toads during the day burrow down into the soft soil, making it so much easier for them to get their food instead of having to chase it. They're very slow and kind of clumsy. So being able to follow a trail and find their prey underground makes it so much easier for them. Their upturned nose is used to dig the toads up out of the ground from their burrows. When they dig them up, they're right there. They're not jumping around and grab them and just swallow them, overpowering them. All the controversy about rear fangs, they don't have rear fangs. They have enlarged rear teeth that are very sharp. Now, the saliva is toxic. A lot of snake saliva is toxic, but this one tends to be a little bit maybe more toxic. There's a lot of controversy with it, but the rear and large teeth are to pop the toads which blow up to make themselves larger and harder to swallow. This is uh, how they are managed to eat large toads. Simus will also eat lizards and skinks, which they find during the day under the soil also. They probably do this opportunistically, but there is evidence that Jeff Bean in North Carolina found skinks and lizards inside the bodies of dead individuals he found on the road. H. Simus, Southern Hognose Snakes breeding habits. They're like clocks with specific timers. They're dormant all winter long, emerging late March into April. That's when mating season ramps up, mid to late April into June. The males can follow females up to a few days and mating occurs. Once mating is accomplished, the female will forage. Once the females become gravid, they will lay their eggs in late July, August, and like clockwork, end of September to mid-October, babies are born and nest underground. They come up and they have to disperse. Um, the babies hatch in underground nest in late September to mid-October. Once they are above ground, they must disperse and find their new homes. Some will travel further distances to create new colonies. Others stay in the same area. They need to find food before it gets cold in December. Once December comes, they go dormant, just like the adults. An interesting behavior of Simus is in the open when they're crawling, they rock back and forth. You'll see this a lot on individuals crossing a road. This behavior is done to distort the serpentine behavior and to portray a leaf or grass 
blowing in the wind so that birds, raptors above do not distinguish the movement. I've seen other snakes do this as well, rough green snakes and a few others, but it's always fun to watch them crawl like this. I started Project Simus back in the year 2008, um, created the website, and my inspiration came from Jeff Bean and his work in North Carolina studying heterodon simus. I had found a small uh, male southern hognose in northeast Hillsborough County, and that's what got me really researching it and brought me upon Jeff Bean's work on the internet. I was fortunate enough to meet Jeff Bean and track Simus with him, radio tracking in North Carolina. And after that, I really, really, really got involved. And in 2013, the FWC hired me to do a rare snake study for southern hognose snakes, short tail snakes, pine snakes. And then uh, a few years later, in 2018, I studied Florida pine snakes for a year, radio tracking them every week for a year. So Project Simons Florida has uh, really benefited me a lot as far as being able to enjoy researching upland snakes in Florida. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was an informative one. And if you like it, please subscribe. And I hope to bring you more and more interesting videos in the future.